Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I've seen the community grow leaps and bounds, uh, especially more so in the last five years. We have at least five Islamic centers, right? and all those five Islamic centers, when you go there during the Friday prayers, during any congregation prayers, you will see they are at the brim of their capacity. We have not one school, but we have two schools, so that shows the community has grown. So this is where this fulfills our our basic need of having a place of worship, having a Islamic school to impart both uh, secular and Islamic education for our kids. In terms of where we have to go from, from here, right? my vision uh, is basically we have to also step up to the, to the challenge of the society. Just like any other community, just like any other society, we have our own challenges. We have a growing population of uh, senior citizens in, in our community, so we had to come up with a project to, to address those needs. We have issues like uh, domestic abuses, domestic violence, we have issues like uh, marital counseling, so we had to really come up with a project to address the issues of marital counseling and financial counseling for our uh, I mean, low income uh, families. We also have issues where uh, we have special needs uh, children in the community. So we had, a, we had to come up with a project where we address that, that uh, unfulfilled need of the community. So these are all the, uh, the key challenges that we have to now start uh, planning for. So that way 10 years, 15 years down the line, we can confidently say that yes, we can and we will exist as a society. Because these are the things that goes beyond fulfilling the basic needs, which is having a place of worship, having a school uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the children. Now, our community has grown both organically and laterally. Right? Like I mentioned, like we have so many Islamic centers now, like at least two Islamic schools. Similarly, we also need to expand our outreach towards the mainstream in a two-dimensional way. One, Obviously, we look up to uh, the mainstream media, right? How do you interact with the media? How do you come up with the program so that our uh, our thought process is, is taken into account when they define who Muslims are, right? So they have to come up to us, and so we have to establish that, that sort of identity uh, in the media. So that's one dimension, and the second dimension is how do we bridge the gap between our community our society and people of other, uh, other faith. Because you really want to, 20 years, 30 years down the line, you want to be considered that you are also stepping up to the challenge. You are also stepping up to the plate and owning up the, uh, uh, the core concept of citizenship of the nation. So we're talking about two thirds of the population being first generation immigrants, right? So, so, so that's the, I mean, current, uh, current constituency. Now, with that comes its own baggage, right? The reason we have many Islamic centers here is because obviously we do have a need for having the Islamic centers, but then at least one or two Islamic centers, when they, when they got established, it was purely based on uh, the ethnic background because of the language barrier or cultural bar barrier, if you will. But then 10 years, 20 years from now, we have to keep in mind all these cultural barriers will dissolve. This will become like a melting pot, right? When, when we have our kids, when they grow up, all these cultural barriers, barriers will be gone. So they would come up as one, one identity, which is American Muslims. So currently, the Muslims in Delaware are made up of multiple organizations, right? They belong to multiple Islamic centers in Delaware. Like I mentioned, Islamic Society of Delaware is the largest group that caters to about 2,000 Muslim families here in the Newark area, right? And we also have uh, uh, the Turkish Islamic Center, the Glasgow Masjid, which is again within the uh, within like two three miles of our Islamic Center, but they cater to the mainly the constituents of that group are from the Turkish uh, Turkish background, right? But then uh, we also have other people who go to that mosque as well. But the main thing is we also have the Wilmington Islamic Center in downtown Wilmington, so they they do lot of activities where we try to partner with them as appropriate. For example, that the Imam of, of the particular mosque is very instrumental in the, 
in the outreach program of the state prisons. So we try to uh, partner with them so that we can, uh, we can also align with them and help them out with our resources so they can deliver the program to the best of their abilities. Uh, one more mosque, uh, Ar-Razakh in downtown Wilmington, and we also work with them uh, uh, as needed. And we also have a, a big Islamic center in uh, Dover, which is state capital. It's called Islamic Society of uh, Central Delaware, ISCOD. So they are based in Dover. And we also have, uh, uh, like I said, at least one non-profit organization, uh, which is a charitable organization, who have their uh, East Coast headquarters in, in New York, which is the Kraft Foundation. So they do this whole uh, uh, charitable activities, and we try to align with them uh, in, in as many programs as, as we possibly could. And we also have two Islamic, uh, two Islamic schools. One is Islamic Academy of Delaware, run by uh, IST, and also uh, Tarbiya School, r run by the Tarbiya School uh, of, of Delaware. So these are the key uh, uh, Muslim centers and Islamic centers, if you will, that are currently uh, uh, doing work in Delaware. We also have one group called the Circle of Hands. Circle of Hands has a specific target, specific objective, where they, they have really uh, established themselves as a cultural center, cultural center for Muslim community. So they have they organize all these cultural activities and where they try to develop the uh, the rapport between the people of different cultures, like mainly South Asian. So they host all these uh, Indian American uh, events and Indo Indo Pakistani events. So they have done the job really well. So these I would say are the key uh, Islamic groups, Muslim groups currently operating in Delaware. Uh, one of the key components of our services here and which we believe that that will help uh, assimilate our society with the mainstream still keeping our identity is through interfaith and outreach activities we also work with uh, we have established a, uh, a program on an yearly basis we bring together people of leaders of different faith and just to uh, discuss on the commonalities meaning not commonality of the religion, rather to address the common issues that we have in each one of our communities. So that way we can together come up with a, with a program that can address those societal issues. So that's, that, that I think is, is, is very important services, one of the important services that we have, we have in the planning stage. And we definitely hope that that would benefit all the minorities and all other mainstream societies which face the common problems. We have gone past the inception or the infancy stage, but we haven't really matured yet. So this is a path to evolution, path to maturity. So I think it, we would get the most out of, uh, out of our resources if we align with other groups, with other organizations who are doing similar things. So that way we can have a whole dashboard of activities to deliver for everyone's benefit.